Hello there GCSEers, and today we're going to explore the question how do Christians celebrate Christmas and Easter? Now many people have set things that they do each year. Just think about your time in school. Exams and assessments happen at set times for example, and also in your personal lives. I'm sure there's things that you do on a yearly basis. For example me, each July at the end of July I go to the open as I've actually told you before. And this is set out in our family and placed on the calendar and I do it every year and it's something that we look forward to as a family. Now Christians are the same and many denominations have set times when they celebrate certain things. This is particularly true of those denominations that have formal worship. This is called the liturgical year and as you can see here, here are some of the times when Christians actually have those events. And we're going to look at two of the most important festivals for Christians, Christmas and Easter. Now we saw in Unit 1 that our word for holiday comes from the idea of Holy Day. And Christmas is seen as the holiday season. Christmas is important for most Christians as they celebrate the birth of Jesus. And here they particularly look at the celebration of the Incarnation, which as you recall is the Christian belief that God becomes a human being in the person of Jesus. Now Christmas for Christians they recall the story of Jesus' birth which is told in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. According to Luke we learn that Mary and Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem due to a census that was across the whole Roman Empire where every man had to go to his hometown. Now Joseph who was descended from David had to go to Bethlehem. On arrival Mary was extremely pregnant and going to have Jesus very soon and they found there was no room at the inn and so the only place for them to stay was a stable and it was there that Mary had Jesus and wrapped him in swaddling bands and laid him in a manger. They were visited by shepherds who had been told about the birth by angels. Now all Christians agree that the story shows Jesus was born to a poor family but stresses the importance of the incarnation. Matthew's account adds the star and the wise men and we see this in traditional nativity plays all over the country and one that you yourself may have been in as a child. Many Christians go to church on Christmas Eve sometimes at midnight to a midnight mass to see in their holy day. This is particularly true of Roman Catholics and some Anglicans who will go to this formal liturgical mass at this time. Now many of the services start in the dark showing how Jesus is the light of the world and then the church is lit up and showing that Jesus is or God is coming into the world in the person that they remember at Jesus' birth. Now some denominations, the Church of England for example, have a Christingle service where children are given Christingles as you'll see like this which involve an orange and placing certain things and the reason for them is shown in the picture. Most Christians exchange cards and gifts symbolising the gifts given by the three wise men and also have a Christmas dinner. Many give money to charity and help, help those in need. And as I'm sure you're aware, many people who are not Christians have taken on many of these traditions, especially the having a meal and the giving of presents, which come from the traditional Christian story of Jesus' birth. Now the most important celebration for Christians is Easter. It recalls the events of Jesus' suffering, death and resurrection during his final, or what Christians call, Holy Week. Here is a brief summary of these events. At Palm Sunday, we've seen before that Jesus arrives in Jerusalem on a donkey, and it was normal for Jewish people to make their way for, to Jerusalem at Passover time. So Jesus and his disciples did the same. Now rumours about Jesus had spread all over Palestine and of course they were expecting this great Messiah figure so they placed palms down on the floor to show that Jesus was coming in to be as a warrior king who would lead the uprising. But this never happened. People were expecting somebody to come and take control and to actually get rid of the Romans out of Palestine and Jesus wasn't this kind of Messiah at all. So very quickly the week changed. And during Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, Jesus is seen very much as having conflict with the Roman authorities and the Jewish leaders at the time. He does things like he, he turns the traders over in the temple and further teaching where he actually has a go at the Jewish leaders at the time. And so many of them plot then to have Jesus arrested and eventually killed. Now the Thursday, or as Christians call it Maundy Thursday, Jesus is sharing his last meal 
that we've looked at when we looked at the Eucharistic celebration. And Jesus is there preparing and he includes the bread and the wine at this meal. And during this meal, Judas is actually leaves the room, one of his 12 disciples, to actually betray Jesus. And he betrays him later on and Jesus is placed on trial for claiming to be the Son of God. Now, this trial happens very quickly and many people believe it was illegal. And eventually on Good Friday, Jesus has a trial with Pontius Pilate to actually see whether he's going to be sentenced to death. And the key thing, as we've looked at here, is how what Christians believe about this death. Now, as we've seen, it's the idea of Jesus' atonement for the sins of human being. So this original sin that human beings have, Jesus is having to die for that so that he pays the punishment of death so that everybody else can go to paradise. And the key one there is that he actually promises one of the criminals on the cross that actually he will be with him that day in paradise. Now on the Saturday, the Passover day itself, Jesus is in the tomb and he's dead and his the disciples are fearing for, for their lives. But the next day, Easter Sunday, according to Christians all over the world, Jesus defeats death and because he was innocent and killed for being innocent of the crime, he actually rises from the dead and this is the greatest thing Christians have in their yearly celebrations. So how do they celebrate it? Well, the first thing they do is they have a celebration on Palm Sunday where many Christians will take little palm crosses into the churches and you can see here this is what they do and they celebrate it by reading the Passion Story and actually remembering the events of Palm Sunday. One of the other major festivals that they have is on Maundy Thursday and this is traditionally the day when Christians remember the Last Supper. And many Christians remember how Jesus was betrayed by Judas and then denied by Peter. Now what they'll do on this day is they'll remember the events of the Last Supper, particularly the words that Jesus uses that we've looked at before, when he says, as he's giving the bread and the wine, take this, eat or drink, this is my body or blood which is given up for many. And by that they remember Jesus' sacrifice on the next day, Good Friday. In some Christian denominations, Roman Catholics for example, they perform something called the washing of the disciples' feet. And in John's Gospel, Christians learn that Jesus washed his feet to show people what it is that they should actually do. Now this was traditionally the role of a servant in a very dusty country. They would wash the feet as people entered their houses. And Jesus actually dis does this to show that you should serve other people. Also the Queen, the head of the Church of England, gives out Maundy money on Maundy Thursday, representing the money that Judas was paid to betray Jesus. Then of course Good Friday for many Christians is the most solemn, sad day of the year when they remember Jesus' crucifixion, an act of atonement meaning all Christians believe they can go to heaven. Many Christians will walk through towns and cities with a cross to remind people that they see the day as very important. And some Christians perform a service where they will actually venerate the cross and by that then what they will do is they will line up and kiss the feet of Jesus on a crucifix. And that's very much true of the Roman Catholic Church. And finally we get the events of Easter Sunday, which for Christians all over the world is the most important Christian festival, celebrating Jesus' resurrection. On Easter Sunday, churches are filled with flowers and special hymns are sung celebrating the resurrection. Some Christians walk around the church at midnight on Saturday and the darkened church with lighted candles or lamps. This is particularly true of Orthodox Christians. Roman Catholics, Christians and Anglicans also perform a service called the Easter Vigil that begins in darkness and actually they will have a fire outside and at this point in time a particular candle called the Pascal candle which you can see a picture of here is lit to symbolise that Jesus has risen from the dead and this all ends in Holy Communion. Many churches have this as open air and sunrise services where they share breakfast together and sometimes even eat eggs the traditional symbol of new life that we know in this country as many Christians have Easter eggs on Easter Sunday. <laughs>